working to create. We are working to create um, something that keeps us motivated through the process. Like, why are we getting organized? Why are we decluttering? And how can we um, make something easier, right? It's about re-engineering the space and the schedule um, so that if you start getting organized or decluttering, you have a desired outcome. You have something that keeps you motivated and you make better decisions about what to keep and what to let go of. And, you know, I find a lot of times people just jump into it. I'm going to start decluttering and they don't know why. And so they don't get rid of enough or they get rid of too much. And then sometimes people overthink. They overthink, how am I going to do it? Oh, it's going to take so much time. How do I do it? I don't know enough. And they procrastinate getting started without realizing that part of the fun is just starting and seeing what happens along the way. And it turns out that the key to solving both the issue of jumping in too quickly and not having a good um, guide rail and not starting because you feel like you need more information wastes a lot of time and does not get you the result you hope for. So the great thing is once you figure this out, it applies to all your work. So you can use this concept liberally on all kinds of work. Um, but I'm going to keep it focused on an organizing example just because it's they're usually more universally understood as the example of, of what I'm talking about. So in this case, it's much easier to keep going in decluttering and organizing your kitchen if you realize the reason you're doing it is to create healthy meals quickly and easily rather than, oh, my kitchen is a mess. I need to fix it because that leads to a little bit of everything in all the cabinets and all the drawers because it's about tidying not actually creating a system that will work to keep you organized for years to come. So why this is, is because our brains love a problem to solve and they will, the brain will search out novelty to stay motivated. And so you have to frame it in a way that allows your brain to um, actually approach it that way, to become a problem solving machine. Um, instead of just stuff you have to do because you feel less than in the case of my kitchen is a mess that implies I messed it up. Um, and so you get to think of the tasks as the things that need to get done to arrive at your destination, the destination you've already planned for. I want to get there. And so I'm going to start with a few steps that I know would be a good first step. And then the other steps slowly reveal themselves. Not necessarily the entirety of the step, but a better way of using or thinking about the step or approaching it. Um, so it, it allows you to be open to more possibilities and opportunities as they present themselves. And it provides clarity about how the pieces fit together um, on how to proceed. And sometimes you'll end up realizing, oh, I don't need to do that part because that's just busy work. That doesn't actually change the desired outcome. Um, so think about that. Like I need to go to um, Los Angeles on the train and I need to pack a suitcase. And one of the steps in packing my suitcase is to um, make sure I have um, these packing cubes. Well, do the packing cubes really help you get to your destination or are they just a nice to have on the final end? Really making a packing list about what you're going to take with you probably gets you a little bit farther along in the process because you're not spinning around overthinking, I can't get packed till I have these packing cubes, right? So um, it becomes more of an exploration and uh, discovery process. And so you feel a little more satisfied actually probably a lot more satisfied if you start with that end destination and have something to be working towards while you're doing it. So there's three questions that help the beginning of any project or any kind of work you want to do. Um, this is like your boss asks you to do something. You can do these in your own brain and see why you're going to do it or how you're going to do it or how you're going to get out of it. 
Let's be honest. I'm that person. Um, so first ask yourself, what is it you're trying to create? What is that end result of getting organized for you? It's not being tidy. I can guarantee you not one of my clients has ever landed on. I just want to be tidy. It has to do with what you want to model for your family. The fact that you want more ease and freedom, the, um, you don't want to take care of so much stuff. You don't want to feel drained at the end of the day. There's something else. Um, you know, why are you working for yourself? Why are you about to quit that job and go into business for yourself? What is it you're trying to create? Chances are it's a better life for yourself and or your family, not because you don't want to work anymore. Um, so second question is, why are you trying to create that? Double check. Ask yourself five different times. Why are you doing this? Often people think they should do something. That doesn't help. What are you trying to create and why are you trying to create it? The other one that can be fun and um, especially for those of us that like uh, spy novels and things, um, what, what are the obstacles you foresee uh, when you think about getting there? When you think about the project of organizing your kitchen, what are obstacles you foresee? Is it interruptions? Is it getting distracted? Is it not knowing what to do with certain things? Think about that. And then think about how you could overcome those obstacles when they arrive. Do you have a plan already in place for, I don't know, having a set of criteria on hand for how to make decisions? Do you have a set of criteria to set things aside that you aren't sure about yet and dealing with the things you do know what to do with at this point? And then doing planning a research session for all those things you don't know what to do with yet. So you can pre-plan. It's called scenario planning. And it helps people think through what might come up and how they will react in the future. So you get to practice now for something that's happening in the future. And then you are much more likely to realize you have a solution for that um, when you get there. So... Trying um, this, trying on your outcome and the process of attaining it, what it acts as that motivation. So the process isn't necessarily the, the important part, other than there is a process in terms of a set of steps you will need to get to your desired outcome. They don't all have to be revealed up front. You might discover them on the way. It's like when you're on a hike and you are looking for trail markers. Uh, you don't always know where the next one is, but it's somewhere in your line of sight. And by pausing a second, looking around, you will find your direction. So just recognize that you got to start with that end destination in mind. And that way it all comes together and you will stay motivated through the middle. No more creating without a plan. And the plan doesn't have to take very long, but it does have to take up a little bit of space in your process. Okay. Well, that's all I've got, really. I will see you next week. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, comment, turn on your notifications, and tell all your friends to join us next week. In the meantime, have a delightful day.